All right, Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you so much, Magnus, from good old Sweden. Sent me these awesome signed cards he owned personally. Magnus is one of the OG guys who essentially started the uh, old school magic group uh, tournament, basically called NoobCon. And NoobCon, uh, I was had the honor to play NoobCon 11, the final one, and then, then there was the pandemic. And uh, yeah, it's now become WinCon in Italy. And hopefully one day we'll play some magic one day in person. Again, Magnus, thank you so much. Merry Christmas. And guys, enjoy the video. Sorry for all the delay. This video is going to be all about the reserve list. What's going on in the market. I hope you guys have a great, blessed Christmas. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com. All right, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. And yes, I haven't done a video for a long time. Been traveling to New York. Been going to Disneyland. Been doing some family stuff. But I want to do a video today. And also, I'll be having a stream of videos until the new year, hopefully, about different Magic the Gathering topics I always talk about. So those of you who've never been to the channel, I do magic finance, uh, cool old magic art, art collectibles, openings, crazy stuff with crazy people, and we play old school magic, Alpha 40, all the old stuff. So thanks again for watching. All right, so here's what's going on. My, I've been asked several times, what's your take on the market right now? Should I be selling, buying? What are we doing? All right, so a couple things have happened, in my opinion. Um, first off, Bitcoin's kind of obviously taking a damper. Cryptocurrency from the uh, you know the super highs of sixty-eight thousand for Bitcoin, that is, and you know obviously there's Ethereum, other altcoins, stuff like that. They've all followed and gone down. So right now the market's in this little flat period, typical for the winter time. Uh, I see it as a buying opportunity because the prices will pretty much are lower than before. But a lot of people are saying, well, next year, 2022, the interest rates are going to uh, go up for the Fed and the stock market is going to plummet and the, sh the freaking world's going to die, essentially. But Tesla stock, don't worry, it's going to go up, apparently. I don't know why. But all bullshit aside, I think that... Um, there's something I've said in all my videos, and I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it again. I think when you invest in magic or invest in any other, like, you know, cryptocurrency, real estate, anything, right? You want to make sure your financials, your portfolio is diversified. It has to be diversified. A lot of times we buy a lot into one thing, and you need to buy into many different things. A reason, main reason why is your, your, risk, is your risk exposure. You know, a lot of people have different risk in different areas. But if you have too much of one thing, if it just crumbles, obviously you can lose everything. And so I say, you know, in the case of the stocks, I, I don't, I, I would say, you know, maybe take some money out and put it into other assets or maybe have some in cash ready to go. Well, Dan, cash sucks. Cash sucks. It's not good. You're right. Cash does suck, but cash is awesome when the market tanks. Huh? So if you believe that the market actually is going to go down, having extra cash to buy at a lower price is an amazing thing. And a lot of people don't really understand this effect because they, well, number one, don't have any cash. Most Americans don't have any cash ready to go. They're over leveraged, right? Too many assets and they have to sell quickly. Um, so I find that some people are pretty much retiring and also you have a situation where they're raising cash to buy, hoping for a downturn which is not a bad thing. I think it's pretty healthy. Um, it's, new, it's, it's just the way the market works. Every market is like that. Having cash on the sidelines is part of a market. Um, I've seen some like questions on like, you know, do I, you know, alpha cards have kind of like been kind of flat lately. Uh, you know, they're not really going anywhere. W what's the deal with that? Um, alpha cards are one of those animals where I continue buying all the time. I rarely sell, I buy a lot. Uh, main reason why is because it's a limited supply and ultimately you have so much, so much more control over that because your supply is so low. 
when the market does go up, the prices are just astronomical in some cases. So uh, prices have gone up quite a bit in 2021. I will tell you that uh, compared to 2020 and obviously 20, 2019, prices are decent, you know, and they flattened out in 2021, but went up a little bit too in the beginning. Um, 2022, I feel like there is room for you to essentially add more add more alpha cards or uh, you know maybe sell some of those higher end pieces that are kind of flat to gain more cash and then buy more alpha cards at a later time. So let me kind of clarify that. Um, when you have these alpha cards, sometimes they go up, they've gone up quite a bit. You could take profits and then resell them and then buy into other stuff later on. One big caveat is the top line alpha cards, the gradable alpha cards, the high end stuff. Those cards in the grading world are highly coveted and they're going to be high, even more scarce as this continues going on, the grading debacle. Uh, less people are grading. Uh, cards are being graded, but less magic's being graded than ever. I think PSA just sent out a report. The number one thing they're grading is basketball. Number two is Pokemon. I mean, there's no magic to gather in that. yu gi is part of it. Uh, baseball, you know, other sports, football. So the issue here is that magic is grading. There's not enough ROI there. And obviously magic being limited, very limited in the older sets, the condition cards, uh, you know, they're not as, you know, they're not, they're very condition sensitive. Um, I told you guys in this other videos that uh, set collecting is basically dead. And I will tell you that it's going to continue for 2022. I feel like in 2022, there is going to be a more, even worse uh, situation for set collectors. What's going to happen is people are, in, in my opinion, people are buying into the sets the last few years, even four or five years ago, let's say. And they're finding that they're unable to fulfill their sets. And now the people are asking, oh, Dan, do you have a antiquities card this? Do you have the dark this? Do you have fourth edition revised BGS 9.5s or 10s? I'm like, why would I grade that and pay $250 fee or $100 fee for a revised card to hope to God they gave me a 9.5 or a BGS 10? The ROI is absolutely stupid. There is no ROI, right? You're negative. So... Set collecting, even at Legends and even at Arabians, is almost like a gamble. Like Arabian Commons are not even $100 in many cases. So if you, ha you have that situation where if you're not even, you're paying a $100 grading fee, let's say $100, and you are not, your card is not even $100, you can't justify grading the card. Now, back in the day, if a card was $5 and you paid $6, $7, $8, $10 grading, you don't feel as bad because if you get a, a, a nine or a 10, you can make your money back or make three to five X more potentially, right? So the market has changed for the grading world. I see set collectors confused and wondering what am I going to do with my set? There's going to be tons of empty holes. They're not going to be, they're going to, you know, so what I do see is that if there's anything on market, especially on auction, auction, especially, um, then you will find that, Hey, this is going to be a situation where a bidding war is going to happen. And you see a lot of inflated prices for those PSA and Beckett price, uh, cards that are really needed for those sets. All right, so let's talk about reserve lists in terms of overall spectrum. There's been videos about Rudy and other people. We always talk about the reserve list every single year a few times. So my take on the reserve list is pretty much the same. I continue to buy the reserve list, but I've scattered away from like Mishra's Workshop, Bazaar Baghdad's, Rudy's favorite cards basically because he has infinite positions of them or, or large positions of them. I don't think those are going to – I find those to be one of those things where if you're always focused on those same cards, you're never going to really make any money long term. I'm already highly invested in those, so what's the point of keep buying those cards? Um I think what you got to look at actually on the reserve list are the cards that are more of the less valuable ones that have gone down. And then those can go up quite a bit. In particular, cards in, you know, uh, they call it the four horsemen sets or whatever, but legends, Arabians, uh, you know, that type of thing. I feel like 
there are cards in there that if you buy more positions um, and they rise, they will rise, especially Legends. I feel like Legends cards are undervalued dramatically. Um, even unlimited cards are really undervalued. And I've been saying this all along, there will be a jump in beta one of these days. Right now, beta is not getting the love, uh, like alpha, of course, but beta one day will jump uh, just by its sheer, like the second edition, but it's black border. Um, it has all the great cards alpha does and more as volcanic Island, which is highly important in every game set uh, gameplay, but it's very iconic as a dual land. And I have to say like beta it, to a lot of people was the original card, you know, alpha back in the day was not loved. You know, it was like, Oh, you know, this is, uh, this is, altered basically you can see you know the rounded corners it's like yeah this is not matching so basically i'm just going to give these away and that's what alpha was for a long time so beta you know is resurging uh there's a lot of nostalgia within beta and i, I will tell you that if you're, you're going to miss the boat if you don't put some money into beta i'm just going to say it another thing i find a lot of money going into now is more awareness is artist proofs i've been saying this all along artist proofs are blank back cards that basically are um, given to artists as collateral and also uh, for their work. And back in the day, you get pretty much 50 of fifty of the proof. And now you, I think you get 30 foils and 50 regular ones. So um, back in the day, you'd have foils. So that, that didn't happen in general, even when they had foils. So uh, the proofs are becoming highly collectible. Um, the, the valuations on these are really high. And some of them are really high, really high because you have them painted by the artist. Uh, sketched is uh, obviously still in demand, but painted is the ultimate one in full color paint. But understand, the prices of the proofs and also the painting itself has gone up dramatically. We're talking like three to five to eight to thousand dollars plus. Some artists charge them over a thousand dollars over for a painted artist proof. And if you think about that, that's a lot of money because you're having a situation where obviously people have grandfathered in, bought these when they were like 50 or $100 for a painted proof. Now these are like big prices. Like they're actually money you can buy into like a, a card that could actually go up, like a reserve list card. So is it really worth it? And I, I've been saying this all along, like artist, artist proof because they are limited. To around 50 uh, and antiquities especially and some legends and some revised had about a hundred or so it depends on the card they printed too many gave to the artist but in general because they're limited to 50 uh, they're so rare they're so finite in some way and there are some people that have lots of them I mean I have lots of positions in different artist proofs in general and I will tell you that it is um, when you have a situation where there's very little in general very little supply and you have collectors understanding, hey, these are the best of both worlds. You got the card, you got the blank back, but that can get it painted. It's like art collecting uh, becomes very personal. People have painted their, their dog, their cat, you know, whatever, right? Have a picture of themselves as an ogre, you know, a, a goblin. I don't care, you know? Artists are, are a big part of our industry. So this type of business, is, you know, these type of cards and collectibles, if you haven't added position into it, I'm telling you, you haven't really missed a boat yet, but the prices are getting really high. And you kind of missed the boat in the sense that if you would have listened to me about three or four years ago, you probably would have made a killing at this point, right? So I still say buy into it. I'm saying it because at a certain point, the artists are going to completely run out of all the proofs they ever had. And then what's going to happen is that, you know, sadly, artists do pass away, you know, as we do. And as that you know that type of era ends right of the vintage artists you have the you know new some of some of the uh, if they call it like the you know the silver age golden age i'm not sure what that means like like the urza's years artists you know they're gonna you know time passes you know i'll pass you know and these proofs that are painted and they have this uh nostalgic thing you know you know like hey you know personalization of the proofs anything like that is going to be really big. And I want you to kind of have this parallel as an investor and think about this. Let's say, um, you know, here's an extreme example. Let's say Michael Jordan, or, or, or sorry, Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth, right? Obviously baseball player, Mickey Mantle. 
did um, some drawings on some cards, okay? At the time, you probably think, dude, this is terrible. Like, he just made some funky little altar of his face and, I don't know, whatever. Like, 1933 Gaudi, you know, whatever that baseball era, 1952 Tops. Let's say he did some kind of, you know, altar or something, you know? And would that be worth anything back in the day? Probably not. But if you think about it now, it's pretty damn obviously impossibly rare and also because he probably never did it right unless someone actually took their 52 tops and had them alter it at a show when he was still around and that would be something really cool right something different and that i i think would actually be highly valuable and so you don't you know at the moment when you're living you don't really think about that but if you think about it from an investment and you have different artists and different collectibles you've invested in it becomes a really, um, uh, it piles up in, in your portfolio. It, and you have a huge diversified portfolio, even a sub-portfolio really within artist proofs. And even, you know, like you have your cards, your altars, boxes, like your boxes, right? You're doing the same thing. So I think people have to be aware of it. It's going to be more and more out there. Uh, the last thing I will say is art market has been really, really strong in general. Uh, very low supply, obviously, in general. But... Uh, I don't think that the art market in 2020-2022 is ever going to see any downturn. I see it only rising. I see art, more art itself is going to rise. I think collecting prints or uh, jaclés, as they call it in French words, are going to rise in value and time. And those go back to what I said before. When artists, you know, you know, the, the era has changed, right? People pass away. Collectors, you know, pass away too. The collections that come out with all that older collectibles start rising in value, and you're gonna you pick it up as you can find it, and also you have to bid against it on auction. And so, I guess I'll throw in that part of it is also collectors in for 2022. I saw a lot of this in 2021. Sadly, is that um, there's people that have been lost, you know, in our community, um, also lost in uh, collectors and. Other, you know, basically estates, you know, that are, are around and they're being sold, essentially. And I think that, sadly, you know, due to COVID and all the other uh, things that happen in life, uh, you will see more and more estates becoming available in uh, large quantities and as we especially get older. So, I do feel like um, having free capital to purchase some of those larger collections might be great. Um, also, you, you know, um, I also feel like um, there's going to be probably a transition phase. I, this is a video that will probably be a longer topic, but I've always wondered and questioned what happens when our generation passes, but then there's all these like reserve list cards and all these other, you know, things that we lie at loved uh, back in the day, but will our kids like it? Will our wife even care about probably not um what memories and what nostalgia of the cards will be kept so that it actually be you know will become like hey you know this was what dad or you know grandpa basically enjoyed and will people actually keep it or will it just be a pure fire sale of collectibles so this topic obviously i'll have to dive in deeper but you know and speaking to my friend justin klasky in florida you know as a, a trust and will lawyer and states um i feel like that area is going to grow as time goes on um i'm not going to pinpoint 2022 as the the year but i will say that i've seen more and more of that over the years and i feel like there's going to be you know opportunity if you have cash on the sidelines especially all right guys well i do plan on doing a few more videos here and there before the new year um i i you know like i said i do these videos for fun if you guys have any comments or any uh, topics you want me to actually uh, you know, talk about, please put in the comments below. And again, Happy New Year, ha Merry Christmas, and I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Hey everyone, it's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. I want to share with you more about how we handle consignments. So to begin the consignment process, we actually need to start with the consultation service. In this consultation, I will determine what you're looking to do. And generally, consigners usually tell me, hey, Dan, I'm looking to sell my items and maximize the value of their collection. After we determine through the consultation, I usually like to do an appraisal process. And 
and the appraisal process in terms of a consignment is more fitted towards authenticity and valuation for current market values. From there, after a contract is crafted and signed, we will then receive the items from you. The reason why our consignment process is very thorough is we also identify cards that could be graded so then they can maximize higher dollar values. So the payment process is very simple. Once we have sold your items, you'll get an updated ledger and we will process payment um, for whatever form of payment you need. As a consigner, you're gonna experience our white glove service. What that means is I'm gonna personally handle your collectibles from beginning to end. And rest assured, the client that purchases your collectibles will also receive the same white glove service. It's a signature service that I really pride myself on in working closely with my clients. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com.